Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to talk about audio amplifier oscillation problems. We'll make an assumption that you have a amplifier or a circuit that was working in the past and now it's oscillating. We'll also assume that it's not coming from the input. In other words, say you have something connected to the input, it's not shielded very well. It's possible that the amplifier can pick up its own output causing it to oscillate. Now there are literally thousands of different amplifier circuits out there. Each could have their own issues, so this is kind of a generalization, something to help you out a little bit while troubleshooting your amplifier. And I have the JAT501 prototype board set up here. I removed a component to make it oscillate, and we'll take a look, th take a look at that here in a little bit. We'll also take a look at some waveforms, uh, the different types of oscillations that you can see in an amplifier circuit that might help you uh, diagnose the issue. But first, let's take a look at your general troubleshooting techniques. Okay, first and foremost, always check your voltages and bias currents and things like that. Many audio amplifiers will have more than one supply voltage. A lot of them have a dual supply. Some of them even have more supplies than that. They might be feeding the input stages from a different supply source. If one of those voltages is grossly off or missing, the amplifier could oscillate. It could make it oscillate. I've seen some of those integrated circuit op amps. If one of the rails goes open, it makes it oscillate. That's one of the commandments in servicing is thou shall check voltages. And hopefully you can find schematics or service data for the amplifier under test. That, of course, that's really useful to have that. Next, you might want to determine if the amplifier had previous repairs, part substitutions, or modifications. A good service tech's work may not be that obvious, but a lot of times you can tell when an amplifier has been serviced, especially if parts have been changed. Sometimes you can get away with substituting transistors, sometimes you can't. I know a lot of the older transistors are no longer available and you have to substitute a newer part. Even if it is the same part number, the transistor may not perform like that old part did. In some cases, when you substitute a newer transistor with a higher transition frequency, it could potentially make the circuit go unstable. And then there are the modifications to a circuit. You see that from time to time. You kind of wonder what the person was doing. If the work was not engineered properly, it can make the circuit be unstable. Last but not least is scoping the supply rails. If the circuit is laid out poor, or you have failing supply bypass capacitors, you can end up with a lot of noise on the supply rails. And that could feed back to earlier parts of the circuit, causing instability. Okay, so now let's look at some waveforms you might encounter when you're scoping the amplifier. First are what I call the high and low frequency continuous oscillations. Amplifier just oscillates, so there's no stimulus from outside sources. You just power it up and it's oscillating. I kind of divide it in a, a low and a high frequency oscillation because it depends on how the oscillation is occurring. If the amplifier is oscillating through a global loop, it'll tend to be a lower frequency oscillation. And by that I mean in the hundreds of kilohertz, maybe to the lower megahertz region. And if it's oscillating around a local loop, the frequency of oscillation doesn't ha have to be, but it usually is much higher, several tens of megahertz. And uh, where do you delineate low and high? Well, you really can. It depends on the circuit. An older, slower amplifier might have a global loop oscillation of you know, a few hundreds of kilohertz, for example, where a more modern, faster amplifier could be above one megahertz to several megahertz. However, a really high frequency oscillation, say tens of megahertz, is usually going to be a local loop. So let me explain what a global and a local loop is. 
using the JAT501 schematic as an example here, global loops are apparent. You know, in this circuit, I'm taking feedback from the output, sending it to the input. So that forms a global loop. It's called global because it encompasses the entire circuit. Well, technically not the entire circuit, but it, most of the circuit is enclosed in this loop. And it's used to help control the gain, noise, and linearity of the amplifier. A local loop, on the other hand, is not very apparent. They can be intentional or unintentional in the circuit. Let me give you an example of a local loop that can oscillate. Well, let's say the power supply bypass capacitors have gone open. That allows all the noise and signal generated from the amplifier to end up on those rails at a fairly large magnitude. Well, this output stage here, if you look at these upper transistors connected to the positive rail, without supply bypassing, that signal that's on the output could also show up on the rail here. And you see earlier stages of this amplifier is connected to that rail. And if that signal is fed back through the rails to an earlier stage of this amplifier, say right in this area, it can cause instability. So what causes this type of oscillation? You could see either with bad bypassing, a lower frequency might be due to bad or missing compensation components. Like I say, scope the rails. Make sure you're not seeing a large amount of noise on the rails. Next oscillation, you only see that when you're putting a signal through the amplifier. It could be music or a sine wave. And you scope the output and you'll see a little bit of oscillation on either top or bottom or both. Sometimes it could appear somewhere else on the waveform. I've seen everything from bad bypassing cause that. Probably most of the time it's caused by instability in the output stage. Correcting that would be more involved than I'm going to get into in this video. But check around the output stage. Make sure the output stability components are in place. Like the Bougereau cell, or some people call it the snubber network and the coil as well if the amplifier has that. Next are square wave tests. When you're injecting a square wave into the amplifier, it's usually one of the tests I do to make sure an amplifier is performing properly and it's stable. Sometimes you'll see a continuous oscillation that when you turn off the waveform, it goes away. Unlike here where it's continuous, but it, you only see the oscillation when you have the waveform. It could be similar to this situation, but I've seen this again with poor or uh, missing bypassing of the supply rails. Sometimes you'll see a ring, usually when you're driving capacitive loads. I'm not too worried about ringing as long as it damps out, but if you get a continuous ring, then definitely look into uh, supply bypassing possibly stability issues in the output stage. Okay, so I have the JAT501 prototype board here, which I used to design the amplifier. I removed its stability component, which is that capacitor right there, and now it oscillates. No stimulus needed, input shorted to ground, so no external influence. You power it up, it oscillates. It's oscillating about 1.75 or so megahertz above the AM broadcast band. And that's, of course, a global loop oscillation. And if you watch the series when I was designing this amplifier, I ran into a problem. I was getting like a 40 megahertz oscillation. And that turned out to be my grounding even though I do have the bypass close to the output stage, and I thought, you know, I had star grounding and the rails are starred out from each component, but still, with these fast output transistors, I had to run better grounds, and then I put these bypass capacitors right at the output stage, and it fixed it. But let me show you here 
in probing this amplifier's rails, you'll still see some noise, even though this amplifier tests to be stable, of course, when the capacitor here is plugged in. But, you know, I ran through all the tests. It's stable, but you will still see a little bit of signal. Now, let me warn you here. I am running this amplifier at plus minus three volts, unplugged from any load, and it's still drawing about a third of an amp. So why is it drawing so much? Well, at such a high frequency, the signal is shooting through the output. It's going from rail to rail. And you don't want, ever want to do this to a regular amplifier because you'll blow up the output stage. So turning that voltage down you know, keeps the amplifier from drawing too much current. See, watch when I turn that up. Wow, we're at 2 amps already. Let's see what happens at plus minus 5 volts up at the limit of my supply. So I better turn that down. I'm not on a very big heat sink. So uh, well, I went too far. So yeah, that's the reason I'm running it at such a low voltage because I know it won't hurt the amplifier. It's keeping that uh, dissipation and current low. See, this doesn't get very hot. So when you're probing the amplifier, after making sure the bypass capacitors are good and there's no solder joint issues or anything, so I'll connect my scope lead up to one of these bypass. Make sure your ground for your scope is connected close to the bypass capacitors. You, you don't want to connect it at the output ground or something like that because you might get noise. And look at that. You can see there is a little bit of a signal but it's uh what is that 48 millivolts rms 152 peak to peak so yeah even with this amplifier normally works you'll still get a little bit of signal now if that signal was much larger say one volt peak to peak of course it what that would be depends on the current you know if you're Amplifier is drawing a lot of current. Of course, it's going to show more on the rails. But in the case of this amplifier, if it was larger, say, one volt peak to peak, then I know I have a problem with bypassing. I need to do something to clean these rails up more. When I was servicing the Tiger Saurus amp, I did have quite a lot of noise on the supply rails. Incidentally, that wasn't the cause of its oscillation, but I did add some better supply bypassing to clean that up. So there you have it. There's some things to look for if your amplifier you're servicing is oscillating. Like I said, I can't be too specific on things because all the different types of circuits that are out there. Of course, you want to apply your technician skills when checking the amplifier. Like I always say, scope those rails. Check those voltages, scope those rails. And with that, we'll wrap it up here, and thank you for watching.